So there we are, the three of us at the Grand Canyon, the, the uh, in it or the, the the top of it. It's a mountain or something. It's like a mountain amusement park type thing with the presidential face. Anyway, we're getting off the topic. So we're looking into this abyss. Uh, what do you what do you mean? Of course I've been there. You think I'm making this up? Yeah, I guess I am. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to look at another feature of the Intune suite, one that's called Device Query. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just show it to you. I don't know. I thought it would be a cool story. Who cares? What do you know? Have you been there? Okay, so let's get started by opening Intune. And let's talk about what device query is. So first of all, um, device query is a way we can look at an individual device and get some information about it. And some folks say, well, I'm, I'm doing that now with Intune, but let's, let's look at the difference. Um, if I am an Intune and go to my windows devices, uh, let me look for a specific. So I have a device here. That's all that's running. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, we can use this as a, a test device. So I have the serial as 0698. And if I look at this device, I am going to be able to see a lot of information about it, right? If you're uh, using Intune, then you're probably familiar with this. So just as an example, one of the things I could do is uh, if I want to see, if I want to see some uh, properties of it, I can just go to hardware. Obviously I'm going to get some information about uh, the operating system version and addition information about the disk drive and the physical memory TPM stuff. Um, uh, this is all kind of static, right? As far as what's on the device, I can see apps I've deployed to it. Um, I can see what Azure groups it's in. However, as far as, uh, if I want to get some very specific real time data off of the device, we haven't had a way to do that without some kind of customer mediation. So let me introduce it to device query. Right. So the first thing you should know about device query is it leverages what's called KQL, uh, Custo query language, I believe. And they have, um, they have a great, uh, write up right here. You could get started in it. If you've done work with SQL, uh, you're kind of familiar with, it. you don't have to be an expert right away. It's pretty easy to, to learn. I'm not an expert, but I have some favorite commands already that I like, um, for device queries. So this is where you would actually write your queries. On the left under properties are all the properties that can be queried. Um, so these are more like categories. So for example, CPU, these are all the things I could, I could address inside of the CPU category. So let's start there as an example, right? And let's take a look at what we can pull from here. So if I type CPU without anything else first, right? Um, and I'm just going to hit run. First of all, it's very important to understand the way this works. This is sending a request to the Intune management extension that's going to basically feed back to Intune this data. Although it's encrypted, this is not exposed to the graph, which is really nice. Um, so you don't have to worry about anything like that because there could be sensitive stuff here. Um, so yeah, just by typing CPU, it went and got all of the information related to that and it collects quite a bit. Um, now the whole point of KQL and forming a query is I call, it's like piping, like PowerShell, you write the pipe and then you can say, um, where if you're looking for something specific where the, uh, let's say architecture contains X 64 and I want to project. I only want certain things. So I want the model. Uh, why am I stuck on? Oh, project maybe shouldn't be capital. I told you we're still learning it here. We want to project the model. We want to project the processor type. We want the core count and we want the logical processor count. So if I run this, um, yeah, this is the one thing I will say is that had to be single quotes. It doesn't do a great job yet of understanding the syntax if you have errors. So um, I should have said that. So quotes have to be single quotes for now. I'm going to run that again and it's going to give me back the same processor information, but it only gives me what I want. So you can see I got the model, processor type, core count, and logical processor count. 
All right, so let's talk about other things we can query, right? Because that's kind of a good example. Um, so what about some useful things, right? When I think about um, things that are useful to me, there are things I need to find out about the device that are very granular that can change. So for example, um, certificates on the device. So certificates are a property here. And let's just call the general. If you want to see what's capable when you look here, just call the the, the root category, the root property. Um, I'm going to hit run. All right, so now you can see it came back with all the certificate information on the device. This is really helpful because it's really only available. Uh, the only other place this is available is in the Defender for Endpoint when you have not only the Plan 2, but the uh, Advanced Threat uh, advanced uh, vulnerability management, threat vulnerability management, whatever that step up skew is, they give you this. But this is a great way you can query yourself. Now, let's talk about building the query. So I don't just want to see all certs. I'm looking for something very specific. So I want to see if it has the right Intune cert. So I begin with the piping. I'm looking for a cert where the issuer contains single quotes. I know I want Microsoft uh, Intune, okay, and I want to project, what do I want back? I really just need the subject name, I need the common name, and I want, ooh, actually I want to add another property. I want it to be Microsoft Intune, and I want it to be and the self-signed, I want it to be equal to true. So it has to be self-signed. It has to contain Microsoft Intune. And that should be it. Common name, subject name. We'll throw the issuer as well. Let's run that. There it is. That's the cert I'm looking for. So Intune root cert authority, issuer. Insert authority, great. Um, now, if I was looking for, I want to get rid of that and I want to do the um, MDM device CA, which uh, self signed. Let's look for that one. So this one, if I wanted the, this is the one we delete when we do the migration uh, into an MDM device CA, it's false, right? So that didn't show up there. Um, but that's ultimately what I want. So you can craft these a little bit. Okay, so what I wanna do for a moment is take a look at the real time, The re let's say I wanna take a look at how real time this is. So I wanna go over to the lab device and I want to show you these groups I have. These are local device groups. Um, I could also do this with local users, but as far as groups go, let's do local users. I have administrator, default account, default user zero, guest, and then this WD uh, AG utility account. So let's query for the users. So let's say local user account. And I just want to project, um, let's do home directory, username, and so we have the SID, Windows SID. So I just want to get this information about the local users. Okay, so we got, uh, actually, let me switch these because that's kind of annoying. Home directory, okay. And that's what you do. You just lay out the order you want the columns to come back in. Again, I'm not a KQL expert. You don't have to be. So one, two, three, four, five accounts. And when we look over here, one, two, three, four, five accounts. So it's getting real-time data. And the reason I want to bring that up is because I'm going to make a new user. We're going to call this user um, Bob Johnson. And password... There we go. So now I have a new user called Bob Johnson. One, two, three, four, five, six. So how real time is this query? I'm gonna rerun this right now on the same device. 
and take a look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's Bob Johnson. So as soon as I made the change to the device, I can get that from the device query. And that's pretty cool, right? So you're, you're really dealing with real time. Drivers is another one. So how, how does, uh, here, Windows drivers. So how does that work? This is something also that's super helpful because it wasn't available in Intune before. And this is an issue I see a lot of admins have to deal with. So here we are, Windows drivers. There are a ton here. And I have everything from the, I get the INF name, um, I can get the manufacturer, the driver version, the description, see what kind of driver it is, right? There are, um, you know, plug and play, uh, a processor thing. So here, um, if we look at all our drivers, we see a lot of them have friendly names. So we could start there and we could say where, um, where is null is not null friendly name and that should narrow everything down that has a friendly name and it does so that kind of makes things easier if we're just looking for that let's say we wanted to look for a few other things so let's do another one if we want to get all the windows drivers where the um manufacturer contains Intel and the you'll notice they have a signed category so let's get everything signed and signed is equal to actually let's get everything that's not equal to true and let's Project is kind of like right output, if you can't tell by now. Uh, project the driver description, um, ink name, provider name, and that's it. Oh, and the signed, I guess, since we're looking at that. Nope, n nothing Intel that's signed, so let's change that to true. Okay, all my Intel drivers are signed, but let's actually, um, let's back up a second, because I think signed would be a good, um, that would be a good thing to look for. I want to look for everything where the driver is not signed. Uh, that's a common thing that I might want to look for in real time. Do I have any unsigned drivers? I don't, so I'm in good shape, right? That's a great thing. That means everything I have is signed. The last thing I want to talk about is going to be how this deals with the registry. Now, it's not 100% yet. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want to show you something here. So if I want to look for, let's say, uh, H key local machine. Now, one thing I will say is this is going to start telling me I have syntax errors. I'm going to explain why. So things can look, uh, let's see, software, Microsoft, and let's query all the keys. So I have quite a bit of keys here. You can see I can active setup, net framework. Let's go into active setup. Let's take a look there. There's quite a bit in here, but um, two things. One is this, because it's KQL, it is complaining because it doesn't have the backslash escapes, meaning two of them, very similar to JSON. If I do this, I'm gonna get the same result, only it's not gonna complain. So it kinda doesn't matter, but it's up to you. But what I do wanna show you is let's look for, a, let, let's look at a common registry path. So if I'm in the registry here and I wanna look for um, software, Microsoft, let's say policies, uh, policy manager. All right, so let's, let's try to query that. That's kind of a good one. Uh, so we will do software, Microsoft policy manager. Give it a little asterisk to get everything inside of it. And all the syntax looks right. I'm going to run it. You see, we have no results, but how can that be? Because if we're looking here at the 
you know, I have ADMX default, ADMX installed, current, and I could technically go through everything here. Well, the reason you're not seeing anything is because it's not querying this. So right now, it is only, uh, the Intune query is only looking at the WOW 64 uh, 32 note. So if I want to query Microsoft MTF fuzzy factors. Okay, so you see this is going to return values and I'm going to see the value names, the red, you know, and I could, I could actually just do these three columns, right? Because again, I can project value name, value type and value data. Get a little bit of a cleaner output. And I could even search, right? I can say where, yeah, where the value name uh, is equal to accent character factor. And that's going to give me just that one. So I guess the bottom line there works as long as you're in the 6432 node. However, there's not a whole lot there. So right now, I think it's best we wait for a workaround on that. So is that exciting? Is it not exciting? I don't know. But what I can tell you is for folks who, uh, you know, are used to doing something like this with a different management tool or SCCM, this is a major uh, update for those of us who use Intune to manage. Because as, as you saw, it's real time. If you make a change, you're going to see the change. You can get very specific in how you query. You, you do have to kind of get used to the KQL language. And uh, there's still some work to be done. It struggles not realizing it with, if the syntax is accurate. But it's a cool feature nonetheless. And definitely, you know, up there on my favorite in the Intune suite. So check it out. Hop in the Discord and let me know your thoughts. Later. Five, four, three, two.